Hey everyone, it's James from Fun Foods, and today, by special request, I'm going to make PewDiePie's recipe of Swedish meatballs. Not only am I going to make his regular Swedish meatballs, but I'm going to make one giant Swedish meatball, PewDiePie style. So keep watching, and I'll show you step by step how to make this. Now, if you don't know who PewDiePie is, he is the most subscribed YouTuber of all time. Yeah, I think he has around 81 million subscribers at the time I'm filming this. We're going to make a recipe similar to what he did, and we're going to have some fun with this. So PewDiePie started out with one large onion and he cut it in half, so it'll be a half an onion. I'm gonna do the same thing as he did there. Forgot to take the ends off. I'm a rookie. PewDiePie says real men don't cry when cutting onions and that's just not true. We do. I am gonna cut them up real small and tiny just like PewDiePie did because I do like my onions diced up real small and fine. Next, what we're gonna do is in this cast iron pan, I'm just gonna heat it up. There we go. We're gonna put it on a low medium heat and I have two tablespoons of butter that I'm gonna use. Put that in there. Next, just grab your onions that we diced up and just push your onions right on in there, your diced up onions. And you just wanna cook these until they have browned and that flavor has incorporated with the butter. All right, right back to where you belong. Okay, let's turn that heat off. Some of these got a little too brown. That's okay, we'll work with it. Next, in a large bowl here, we are gonna add some ground beef. I'm using this 85-15 lean. It's 85% lean, 15% fat. Ground beef, he used minced meat, which is slightly different than ground beef. Um, the biggest difference is ground beef is grinded with fat on through a grinder. That kind of grinder, not that kind. And uh, minced meat is just diced up like really small chopped up meat. You know, it's much more leaner than this. So that's the biggest difference. And here we go. Let's open this up. I'm not left-handed, but I did cut this with my left hand. Not very effectively, but we did it anyway. So I'm just taking that and plopping that in there. We're gonna take our onions that we browned Put that in there. That's gonna give it nice flavor for sure. Don't put your pan in the sink just yet because we're gonna use the same pan in a little bit. So, no sense dirtying up other dishes. We're gonna add a little bit of pepper. Not a lot, a little bit of salt. And some plain breadcrumbs. Now, yo, Felix didn't say how much to put in each one of these. PewDiePie is Felix, by the way. Um, so we're kind of playing with it, and that's what he said to just kind of play with it to get the right consistency. We're gonna be making meatballs. And uh, we're gonna use some heavy cream. He used double cream. It's basically the same thing. I'm gonna start off with that much. We might have to add a little bit more. Now the fun part, use your hands, get nice and messy. We're gonna work all this in here. I'm gonna wash my hands before I touch those containers. So I'm hoping to get the consistency just perfect because I don't wanna to have to keep washing my hands in between here. I think that'll be good. We're gonna have a little bit more cream. Not a lot. But I do think we need more breadcrumbs. Let's keep mixing. All right, so now that they are all nice and mixed up, I'm gonna put our meatballs on the same thing we cut our onions with. Take a handful, roll your meatballs. I'm not gonna make them that big. Let's make them a little smaller. So, roll your meatballs out. So Felix joked about making one giant Swedish meatball and um, I'm not joking because this is fun foods. I mean, what do we do here? We make giant stuff. And I figured with the rest of our meatballs, or meat I should say, I'll make one that's giant. You think that's good? Now that's a Swedish meatball. There you go, Felix. Now, of course, this giant Swedish meatball is going to have to cook a little bit different, and we will show you what to do with that in just a moment. Now what I'm doing is I preheated my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and the reason for that is 
after I brown that giant Swedish meatball on here, I'm gonna put it in the oven so it'll cook all the way through. If we just did that on the stove, it wouldn't cook all the way through. It'll be very raw on the inside and not recommended to eat raw meat. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna turn our stove back on, same pan we used for the um, onions. We'll put that on there. Uh, I have about another tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna add that to there. There we go. Now, our giant Swedish meatball. Eat your heart out, Felix. This is a Swedish meatball. So we're gonna take that, put that in there. I do have my oven, or my stove, on medium-high heat. We really want to brown this meatball. Try to keep it moving a little bit, and, um, and if we can, we can roll it. Get a little bit on one side, roll it to, you can see how it starts to brown a little bit. And that sound means my oven has reached 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's about the time that I wanna pull this off and put it in the oven. I do have a cookie sheet lined with foil, and I'm gonna put our giant meatball on that. Ugh, it's heavy. There we go, put this in the oven. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I'm guessing maybe a half hour. We'll check it though. So we're at about the halfway point of our giant Swedish meatball, so let's check in the oven and see how it's doing. Look at that. Mm. Take a closer look. Uh -huh. It's coming along, it's like a giant meatloaf. All right, let's close it up. So it's been a half hour. I'm gonna check on our giant Swedish meatball to see if it cooked all the way through. Now I do have a thermometer, so I gotta check the temperature. I'm gonna pull it out first. Let's see. Mm. Wow, check it out. I don't think it's done. Oh, that's hot. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. the grease ran to my oven mitt and uh, wow, that is really hot. Ooh. Be careful. All right, so I can see it's not done yet and I'll show you. I'll show you up close here. So as you see, it's kind of cracked a little bit and uh, let's get a better lighting there. So uh, you can see it's kind of pink in there. I'm pretty sure it's not done but we're gonna double check with a thermometer. So it's uh, 74 degrees in my house, perfect. So we're gonna stick that in there, check it, see what it comes up to. And I kind of got it right to the middle. I didn't go all the way down. And you can kind of see uh, it's 81 degrees, nowhere near, it's about halfway done. And of course this time I'm gonna try not to burn myself. So our giant Swedish meatball has been in the oven for another 20 minutes. That's a total of 50 minutes. We're gonna pull it out, and this time I'm going to be careful not to burn myself. There we go. That's what it looks like so far. I'm gonna put it on here, and we're gonna check the temperature to see if it's done. We still have some more work to do, it looks like. Stick it back in the oven again. This time, I'm gonna go with another another 15 minutes. So 15 minutes, actually I'm gonna increase the temperature to 375. And here we go, we're gonna try this yet again. Pull this out of the oven. Ooh. Looks good, let's see, it's popping. Don't stop yet, keep going, keep going. No, keep going. Come on, you can get there to make sure that it cooks well. I am gonna put it in just for five minutes. I really don't want my giant Swedish meatball to be undercooked. So I'm gonna put it at five more minutes. It's okay if it cooks more than 160 degrees Fahrenheit, but it needs to be at least 160. All right, so now we're pretty sure our giant Swedish meatball is gonna be done. Pull that out. Again, be careful with the grease. Check it out, this is what it looks like. A giant Swedish meatball that's still popping. I'm keeping my face away from it. Whew. It's hot. 
check it one last time for temperature. So yeah, it's at 164 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So it is done. Uh, I put it in there another five more minutes. I don't know the total. I already lost track. I knew it was 20 minutes. Uh, well, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Was it 15 and then five? I don't know. We'll have to look. So now that our giant Swedish meatball is done, we're going to make our little ones, the ones we already rolled up and everything. And we can do that on the stove. And I have our same pan that we've been working with. It has that nice onion smell. I'm going to turn that on. And we're going to put it on medium heat. I like to use this. And I have some butter in the pan already, about a tablespoon or two. Put a few of them in there. Do about half of them at a time. Now at the same time, I have some rice cooking. This is rice in a bag, I'm making it easy. Unlike PewDiePie, he used potatoes. I'm using rice to serve these with. You can, you can serve them any way you want, any kind of vegetables or anything. Now you wanna keep these meatballs rolling around. You don't want them just to stay on one side. So these are our meatballs browning. And there is our bagged rice. Yes, I'm a professional, bagged rice. Uh, yeah, so they're gonna be browning nicely. Just keep them moving here. All right, so when your meatballs have safely cooked, we're gonna take them and just put them on a plate and cook up the rest of them. All right, so that's the last of them right here. I'm gonna plate these up. I'm actually a little worried that my smoke detector has not gone off yet. I've opened up the windows and the doors and uh, my house is completely filled with smoke. I don't know if you can tell. Turn off your heat, but don't get rid of the pan just yet because we still have one more thing to do with it. Our rice is coming along, almost done. Now we're gonna make the sauce that goes over top of our Swedish meatballs. And to do that, we're just gonna use that same pan, has some butter in there already. Hopefully the sound's good. I have my doors and windows open right now and uh, car traffic going by, but uh, we have to work with it. So I have some heavy cream here. I'm gonna pour a little bit of that in there. Roughly about a half cup. And PewDiePie Felix used some soy sauce. So I am gonna use some of that. I'm not gonna use a lot. maybe a tablespoon. I'm gonna heat this up and we're gonna put it on a simmer. Just mix that around and it should thicken up over time. So we're just gonna keep it on a simmer and we're trying to time this all perfect so our rice gets done at the same time the sauce gets done and then we can serve up our Swedish meatballs. All right, so our sauce is now ready. It's thickened up a bit and it's almost like a light brown gravy. Our rice is ready. We're gonna plate all this up. So our meatballs are all done, our sauce is done, our rice is done, our rice in a bag, and we're gonna plate all this up. We're gonna take our giant Swiss meatball, Swedish meatball, I should say. Look at that. That is our giant Swedish meatball. And uh, here are our regular ones. So we'll bring in our sauce. You can see it's nice and thick, it's perfect. We're gonna take this and pour it over top of our giant Swedish meatball, PewDiePie meatball. Well, now it's time for the taste test. What do you say we dig into this giant Swedish meatball, see how it looks, see how it tastes? Mm. Look at that. We'll try that right there with some rice on there. Mm. Mm. That is a good meatball. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me make PewDiePie's recipe of these Swedish meatballs. It was a lot of fun making this. Thank you to everyone who requested I make it. And I finally got around to making it. It took a little while, but we did it. 
And my favorite, of course, was the giant one. PewDiePie didn't make the giant one, but I did. Just remember that, PewDiePie. I am the king of YouTube. <laughs> Just check it out. Um, if you want to see PewDiePie's uh, video, I'll put a link in the description below to his video where he made them. It was a lot of fun doing this. And thanks again to everyone who watches this. And if you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that like button. Also hit that big red subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed to get new videos all the time, check out some of the videos I have off to the side. I think you may enjoy those as well. And as always, I'll see you next time.